Rookie tight end Russ Francis was the pride of the receiving corps. In any situation, he made the catch. Beating deep defenders as a nuisance, no more important than buzzing house flies. More talent than any human I ever saw. I've never seen a more gifted athlete than him. Steve Grogan unwound long passes to tight end Russ Francis, number 81. Growing up, Russ was my favorite player. He was well known around here as Mr. Charisma was our nickname for him. While the good hands of Russ Francis made him an all pro. Russ was a great tight end, a prototype of what you look for. If you didn't cover him going down the middle, you know, with a couple people, he was going to make the play. I had so much, just all of his talent. He absolutely was Gronk. In fact, Gronk is Russ Francis 2.0. Hello there. Well, how are you? It's I, so great to see you. How did they know mm. I, was, I, was your, I was your first and you were mine? I know, oh, I know. It's just a forever thing. I know. It started and it just will never end. My very first drafted player in my first draft was Russ Francis. I get there and it was Ernie Adams, um, who's been a fixture here with the New England Patriots since then. He and Nancy Meyer, two of my best friends and buddies, we're all rookies together. To this day, I keep a picture of Russ in my office to remind me of my very first draft. We're all about the same age. In the Hawaiian Islands, yes. I um, came from a real different background and come to New England where they're very, very, very serious about their sports and they were very, very, very serious about their Patriots, and I didn't know anything. New England Patriots first round selection, Russ Francis, tight end, Oregon. When you found out you were drafted, did you think they had reinstituted the armed services draft? Like, you didn't even know what the NFL draft was, right? My brother comes down from the ranch house. I'm in the snow feeding cattle. We had a bunch of cattle. We worked at two other ranches. This is January when the NFL used to hold the draft then. My oldest brother, Bill. He says, hey, you've been drafted. You got to get up to the phone. They're waiting for you. And I said, they can't do that again. They, get, they had the lottery back then. He goes, no, you idiot. It's the NFL. So I said, well, tell them it's going to be two hours before I'm through feeding. I got to go back to the bar and get hay and all that stuff. Go there, and the phone's hanging, swinging. I said, Bill, what, what's going on with the phone? He said, they're still waiting. And I don't think the coach, his name is Chuck Fairbanks, is very happy. Oh. Anyway, so Chuck came on, he says, you're on a plane tonight to Boston. I said, you know, I really can't do that. I said, is your mother home? Put mom on the phone. She says, yes, coach. Yes, I understand him. Okay, fine, I'll tell him, but it's up to him. It's his decision. He'll call you back, click. She said, listen, my recommendation is that you get to go first class tonight, get into Boston tomorrow morning, meet with the coach, let him have his say, then tell him whatever you want to say that you're either going to play or you're not going to play, but do it in person. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. And it is a typically wind-blown candlestick park. And frankly, I am cold. Howard one night called him All World. So I think that's the first time anybody was given the designation All World. The quick pitch out to Russ Francis, the tight end, the sophomore from Oregon. And this young man may someday be all world. So big, so strong, so powerful, and indeed so fast. Howard Cosell coined the all world phrase my rookie year when I caught like a 40 yard pass in Miami on a Monday night game. Because I called him up when he started calling me all world. Because my teammates started trying to beat me up in practice and roll me over, knee me in the ribs and everything else. The guys on the field playing against saying, all world my ass. I said, Mr. Cosell, thank you for taking my call. It's such an honor for you to even mention my name on a Monday night game. I said, I have a big, big favor to ask of you. And he says, number 81. He said, all world. He said, what can I do for you today? And I go, oh God, I'm just stumbling. And I said, Mr. Cosell, could you please stop calling me all world? They're killing me out there. My teammates and the other guys. Do you notice any silence right now? There was silence. 
and all of a sudden that booming voice, number 81, listen up and listen close. Get tough or get out, click. Coach Fairbanks got Mike Haynes and Tim Fox the next year and everything else. And Stanley Morgan came back early from Tennessee and uh, Steve Grogan from Kansas. Teammates like Daryl Stinley, you know, John Hanna, Leon Gray, um, Shelby Jordan, Steve Nelson. It was everybody working together and we went 11 and three, the largest, quickest, biggest turnaround in NFL history. So they went out and did it. and went on to play the Raiders, and we should have won that game. If you really want to think about it, he was Gronk before Gronk. Play action fake, end zone, caught, touchdown, Gronkowski. Gronkowski on his feet at the 15, at the 10, at the 5, and he is down, and he is in to the end zone. Fires to the left, and it is a spectacular catch in the end zone. <laughs> I look at Rob Gronkowski, and I marvel at what he can do, and I can't wait till the next play. The one thing that separates him, and I believe me, from most tight ends, you said a complete tight end, that would block and have the speed to get downfield and have the hands. Oh! Makes a twisting one-handed catch with his right hand inside the pylon. You know, people have asked you, okay, what was the difference between Russ Francis and Rob Gronkowski? Well, the difference was that Rob played on a passing team with a Hall of Fame quarterback. Better, better stiff arms and other carries a crowd to the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Gronk leaps to the end zone. Touchdown. We were a run first team and those off tackle plays, it started with Russ at the point of attack. I think of him the same way I think about Gronk. Again, another player who could dominate the game at his position. This was in the days where tight ends were essentially glorified offensive linemen. And here was this guy who had a big personality off the field at a time players didn't, and on the field he was like nobody else. I don't do social media, uh, so I haven't seen him on social media. I could see where he is a real kick uh, because he speaks his mind, got a great sense of humor. There's nothing that he can't do. There's many players that have talked about Russ Francis when I got here as a New England Patriot. He was the first Gronk. He was Gronk 1.0. I was Gronk 2.0. Russ Francis was the absolute man back in the day. Like, he was the guy on the field and he was the guy off the field. So, what a legend he is. Russ Francis, thank you for putting the tight ends on the map. One of the best of all time, and he will go into the Hall of Fame. Well, first of all, Joe, congratulations from the nation. You guys were fantastic all year long. Where do you go from here? Well, hopefully the we can get back started again in July, in middle of July. And just... Howard got me started into broadcasting to work as Al Michaels, Keith Jackson. The Hawaii native and the erstwhile New England all-world tight end, Russ Francis. So Howard had an affinity for, for Russ. He liked Russ, and Russ liked Howard, which made Howard like Russ even more, shall we say, having known Howard. Did you have fun doing it? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. Because I could just say what I had to say really short, succinct, and those guys could go. So what's next for George Rogers? Hopefully the Super Bowl. I think he thought of Russ as a guy who would not give the standard what Howard called jock talk, and had a, had a point of view, and had a, a way of using words that would make him sound a little different than the average guy coming off the field. Well, thanks, Al. Let's focus on the two days. Practice in the morning. You'd hop in the plane and go to the vineyard for lunch? Yeah, yeah, I, I did. I went to the vineyard for lunch because it was a college environment, Bryan College. The, the food wasn't that great. So I kept my little airplane that I bought with my bonus, signing bonus, a Beechcraft Sierra, uh, and flew to the vineyard, flew to Nantucket, and would, every once in a while a player would say, hey, can I come with you? Well, we're supposed to be eating lunch with the team, socializing. And then you're supposed to go take a nap and rest up and get ready for the three o'clock practice. Well, I'll go to the vineyard, just have a nibble of this or some really good or some lobster or whatever, go walk on the beach and then um, fly back, drive back to and get no nap, don't need a nap, 
and go in and get dressed and go to practice. Fist in the ribs, slide up into the armpits. The head moves his head back, where the head goes, the body goes. He goes up in the air and over onto his back. That's the idea. My mother taught us to live our lives uh, our own way and make our own decisions. If you really have joy and passion like I did for flying, it brings back a lot of fond memories. I'm honored to say that uh, I gave everything I had and continued in any time I've ever done anything with the New England Patriots. I want to thank all the fans for everything they've done for 48 years. They are why we got to play. They were there for us, win or lose, in the snow, in the rain. You talked about being privileged to meet these people, play with these people and everything else. The fans are, they're at the very top of the pyramid.